siblings in Christ, beloved family and faith, grace to you and peace from the God for whom we long, for the, from the Christ for whom we wait, and from the Spirit for whom we hope. With all our scripture texts this day, it might just as well be Advent. <laughs> and let's face it, we need a little Advent right this very minute. Not because Christmas is coming, not to get us in the spirit of the season, not because our children are beginning to prepare for their annual pageant, even as we speak, but because Advent really is less about anticipating Christmas and more about longing, longing for what is to come, longing for what is to be, and longing for a day when the world of which we sang in our gathering hymn will come into being, will be ushered in. And what a world it will be. Can you imagine, as we sang, let streams of living justice flow down upon the earth. Give freedom's light to captives. Let all the poor have worth. The hungry's hands are pleading. The workers claim their rights. The mourners long for laughter. The blinded seek for sight. Make liberty a beacon. Strike down the iron power. Abolish ancient vengeance. Proclaim your evil's hour. But wait, there's more. The hymn goes on for the healing of the nations, for the peace that will not end, for the peace that will not end, for love that makes us lovers, God grant us grace to men. I invite you to go home with that hymn this week and sit with it. Take hymn 710 with you. Take a hymnal home. Read it every morning upon waking and every night as you say your bedtime prayers for the next week. Just please bring the hymnal back next Sunday. <laughs> but let it be Advent for you and for your soul beginning now. Even though Advent doesn't start for another three Sundays, it's time. It is so time. As the Wicked Witch of the West cried out after Dorothy threw a bucket of water on her and she herself began to liquidate, what a world, what a world. This is the cry of Advent. What a world in which we live, and what a world for which we long. A world that leans into the vision of the prophet Amos this morning, let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. A world that leans into the hymn writer's vision, abolish ancient vengeance. Strike down the iron power. Let all the poor have worth. As I sat in virtual, virtual rooms this past week with our Palestinian Lutheran siblings, we prayed and we lamented together for the people of Gaza, 11,000 dead and counting including 4,000 children and 1.5 million displaced. And as we lamented that fact, this assessment was made by the Reverend Dr. Munter Isaac, pastor of Christmas Lutheran Church in Bethlehem in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Quote, It seems there is no place for us in this world. End quote. It sounds like the cry of the Holy Family. 
seeking safe refuge for the birth of the babe of Bethlehem. It seems there is no place for us in this world. What is happening in Gaza and with the Palestinian people is nothing less than genocide and ethnic cleansing on the part of the state of Israel with the aid of the U.S. government. And the only way, the only way we can see a breakthrough of the world are opening him imagines in abolishing ancient vengeance is to call for an immediate ceasefire. God is not in war. God is not in so-called hellfire missiles. God is not in bombs bursting in air. Rather, God is under the rubble. God is in the ashes and in the dust that covers the children, the hospitals, the mosques, and the churches of Gaza. And God is in the sackcloth and ashen hearts of the grieving families of the 1,200 residents of Israel brutally murdered on October 7th. But God is not in the weapons of war. God is not in retaliatory strikes. God is not in ancient, re ancient retribution. Former Bishop Munib Yunan of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land said this week, for people of faith, there is no just war. There is only a just peace. There can only be peace with justice. As we heard in today's gospel, God comes small and quiet as in this little nativity box that the children witnessed. God comes small and quiet as oil in a flickering lamp, the flickering lamps of the faithful, the oil of hope for a world that is not yet to be, the oil of faith that believes that such a world into which we lean and for which we pray is actually possible. And the oil of love that dares to speak up, to wake up, and to remain awake. Beloved siblings in Christ, we need a little Advent right this very minute. To keep our lamps trimmed and burning, to let them burn brightly, bringing light and hope to the world. Jesus says to us in Matthew's Gospel a bit earlier, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid, but on the lampstand it gives light for all in the house. And then Jesus goes on, and these are the words we speak in holy baptism. You'll remember them as we present a candle to the newly baptized, in which we say, in the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Beloved, may the good works of Advent, our lamps of peacemaking, our lamps of justice seeking, and our lamps of cease firing become reality as we continue to pray, thy kingdom come, and as we sing in a moment, the bridegroom comes awake with lamps your gladness take. Hallelujah.
the love of Christ comes, the light of the world, the Prince of all peace, dispelling your darkness, 